See, when I was a little boy, I always connected greatness with money. Do you, can, you, can you relate to that concept? Yes. I always thought that the more money I make, the greater I become. And then I grown up. And I realized after studying, and it's my passion to study great people and all inspirational individuals in the world. And I just realized that greatness is not about money at all. It's part of it. It's part of the equation when we talk about greatness. But it's just part of it. And I, I done some research on some great people, and I put all together this speech for you. And I, and I found that being successful is the base, is the first pillar of greatness. And when we talk about being successful, that's where, where most people get stuck. It's all they care about is how much money they can make. And as I said, when I was little, I always connected money with greatness. And we somehow come to the conclusion that the more money we make, the better we become, the more influential we become. And so, but it, it's the first pill of greatness, just the basic, it's something what, what the greatness stands for. When I talk about success, what it means is how well you're doing for yourself. How well you're doing for yourself. That's what all success is. And the second pillar of greatness is significance. And when I talk about significance, it is how well I help other people to do great, to be successful for themselves and their families and people they care for. And then there is the last pillar of uh, greatness. It's the greatness itself. And greatness itself can be defined as our ability to inspire more people to do great things, to help other people to become successful for themselves and their families. So all that definition of greatness changed. And I have a very nice story which I found many, many years later about greatness, and I would like to share that story with you. And it's all, it's the story, it's about young students who decide to start, to start searching for greatness and its secrets. And they want to demystify what, secret, uh, what, what uh, greatness is. So they start searching and they travel across Europe and they find this old ancient town. And as they walk through the gates of its town, they find an old man sitting on a bench. And so they approach the man and the young leader of the group. So excited with all these questions he, he has, he approaches him and he asks him, So good morning. Have you been born in this village? The old man looks at him and he shakes his head for a pool. Yes, I have. And he gets so excited and you can see how excited he is. And he continues with another question. Sir, and is it true that all the great ones were born in this village? And the old man looks at him and says, no, there are only babies born here. <laughs> there are only babies. You see greatness. It's not something you are born with. Greatness is determined by the decisions you and I will make throughout our entire lives. It's the decisions we, are made, we make throughout our entire lives. And the reason why I want to share with you this speech about greatness, this lesson about greatness, is because this is what I want for you. I want for every single one of you in this room to experience success in your life. I want for every single one of you to experience the results of significance and greatness in your life and lives of your friends and people you care about. So what are the three main common characteristics of great people? Would you like to know? Would I? Yeah. Are you ready to learn something tonight? Yeah. So if you can turn to the person you're sitting next to and tell them it's, it's about time to learn something tonight and you need to take very good notes. In, indeed it is. <laughs> I said indeed. Can you turn to the person again and tell them it's about time? It's about time. It's definitely about time. Perfect, because I'm ready. Okay, so number one. What great people do and how they live is they think possibilities. 
Number one, great people think possibilities. You see, you show me a person who only thinks about one way to achieve things. But there is only one way to go somewhere and to do something. And I'll show you a person who is going to feel confused and feel beaten by life for the rest of their days. But at the same talking, you show me a person who think, who think possibilities, who thinks there are more ways to do things, and I'll show you a person who has a bright future ahead and who never, ever give up. You see, when I was in Ireland, that was in 2008, I, I got to a small village called Capo Queen, and it was about 500 people living there. And then everything changed. Everything changed. It was 500 people and me. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, what would I do every single night? I would go to a, to a local river, which was about 15 minutes walk from my place. And I would go to a river, sit down, and I would visualize an Australian flag. And I would see a harbor bridge I never been at before. And I would think about possibilities. I would, I would imagine things that they were not here yet. And then many months later, when it was the transition period before I went to Australia and there were last days in Ireland, I went to see every single person who helped me on my way in Ireland, and I went to say how grateful I was. And I went to see Morris, the guy who saved my life. I was just 22. I didn't speak any English. They struggled. People in Cabo Queen, they struggled with finding jobs for themselves. Native speakers. And he indeed saved my life. And so I went to see him and I said how grateful I was. And then, and, I, and at the same time I told him how afraid I was, how scared I was, what's going to be next for me. And he just looked at me and smiled. It's like, Thomas, you're going to be okay. You survive. And there is a reason why you came to my life. And there is a reason why I came to your life. And there is a reason why you have a dream you have. And there is a reason for you to have talents and abilities you don't know yet about. There is a place for you. You're home. So this is what I want for you. Because what Morris did that night, when I went to see him, what he did for me, he planted a seed of possibilities in my heart. He indeed did. And this is what I want to do for you. And if you can take a pen and write this down for you and put it somewhere where you can see it every single day, put it on the fridge or put it in the car where you, in, in which you drive, and I want you to have it every single day to remind, of, to remind you who you are and write this down for you. There is a place for me and my dream. There is a place for me and my dream. I'm home. I arrive and have it. And something I've learned about possibility thinking, this is what I want to do for you as well. I want to share with you something which possibility thinking has given me. Number one, it has given me clarity. Possibility thinking gives you clarity you never thought existed before. And I was thinking about an example how to give you and what, what to share with you to demonstrate this point. And I thought about 1963. Imagine you are being in 1963 on the streets of Alabama, where Mr. Martin Luther King is marching with thousands of people. And you, you, you are put in there, and you can watch all these thousands of people walking across the streets, and you are like, oh, And you approach Mr. King with a question. Mr. King, can you please tell me what's the meaning of this? What's happening? What's the purpose? Why are you doing what you're doing? Can you imagine Mr. Martin Luther King to look at you and tell you, oh, I don't know. Oh, I was just brought here. Clarity. 
possibility thinking gives you clarity in your life. That's it, it's the foundation to which greatness can be built. Number two, possibility thinking gives you courage. It gives you courage to become a person you always wanted to be, to do things you always wanted to do. And when I was thinking about giving you an example about courage, I thought about my best friend who died last year. And before Chelsea died, we had a class conversation about courage and about all our dreams. And I, I have it written down, so I would like to read it for you. One of the last conversations with Jacob. And he's the person who planted a seed of courage in me. How much courage is necessary to step out of all you know? We did it. We left all we knew behind. Everything we loved and made us to belong. Then we had to learn a new language, lose all our friends, pay the price of following our dreams. We overcame our loneliness, shyness. Every day we walked into our fears, fearlessly and bravely. We shared accommodation and slept with people we never met before, doing jobs most people would never do. Being humbled every day became a part of who we are. Being uh, all that tested our character. Starting a new life of hope and passion. Finding ourselves in situations where most people would never want it to be found. Losing ourselves just to find ourselves again with even more power at our hands. That was our last conversation with Trevor about courage. What next can possibility thinking gives you? It can give you faith. What faith is really about, it's not about being, being afraid of what's going to happen. Faith really is all about walking with confidence. Walking through the direction you choose for yourself. It gives you charisma. Now let me tell you something. I am not sure about all of your dreams. I am not sure about all of your passions. I am not that good. But I know something about you. You see, Tim, you don't wake up every morning saying to yourself, ah, I just want to meet somebody today who is going to suck energy out of my body. <laughs> you know, you don't tell yourself, Scott, every morning when you wake up, ah, I just want to wake up today and meet somebody who after 10 minutes spend with that person, I just want to find the nearest bridge <laughs> and go home and jump. <laughs> you don't do that. The reason why we don't do that is because we are naturally attracted to people who keeps inspiring us, who keep bringing hopes up, who see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's who we are. Charisma. Gives you charisma. So, guys, second point. They embrace change. Inspirational people, people of greatness, embrace change. And I know what you're thinking. And we all have that in common. I don't think that there is many people out there who really like change. Would you agree with me? Yep same boat as you guys. But there is something there is something about change, something scary. And yet the most profound changes when they happen, one fact remains you will never stay the same again. And people of greatness, inspirational people we we look up to. They have this inherent understanding about life, don't they? But life is not fair. By the way, who thinks in this room that life is fair? Then? No. Life is not fair, it's hard. And yet, when you look at someone who inspired you, and you look at how they perceive change in life, what do you find that they, that they have developed this in, not just in her understanding about change, 
but they create this attitude of tendosity, emotional elasticity, which helps them to perceive the future in different colors. And the five things you can learn from great people is they understood these five key elements about life. Number one, Life is filled with good and bad. The first fact about life is life is filled with good and bad. Number two. Some of the good and bad they can't control. We can't control everything. Number three. Some of the good and some of the bad will find me. No matter what you do, you can't run away from life. Number four, if I embrace change, what happens is the good and the bad in your life will get better. I'm not saying it will heal. It's not like, <coughs> and it changes, no. But it will get better. But people who struggle to embrace change, the good and bad will become worse. And there is the third point about inspirational and great people. It's the way they live. And this, this last point I would like to focus on their ability to build relationships with others. And I broke it down for three parts and that's number one, they believe in people. Great people believe in other people. When I was little, I always believed in others. And I still do. And I have countless conversations with others who tell me, Thomas, but you can't believe in people. I'm like, why is that? Because they're going to hurt you. Oh. And they're going to take advantage of you. Oh. And I'm pretty sure you're thinking about the same, aren't you? Thomas, I can't believe in you. But let me tell you something. Every single great person I ever heard of or I ever met, they made it because somebody else believed in them. They did it because somebody else believed in them. Number two, they practice humility. And what humility is all about. It reminds me of a story when I was 19 years old and I, I went for this uh, conference, the training we had, and I saw a speaker and he inspired me so much. And I was sitting in a, in a lobby talking to my friend, we were discussing the ideas of the meeting, of the, of the event. And the guy was, past, was coming to us and I'm like, oh gosh, I hope he's not going to talk to me. You see, you have to understand this. I was nobody. If you meet me 15 years ago, I had no, no confidence at all. And this guy came to our group and he smiled. And he's like, what's your name? Thomas. And what's your dream? And then it started clicking. Because when you meet somebody of great, when you are in presence of great people, it's not about them. That's how you distinguish between these two. When you are in presence of greatness, it's all about you. It's all about your dreams. It's all about your achievements. It's all about your success. It's all about your journey. They have some ability to bring themselves to where you are. Most people ignore that. You know all these people, when you, when you talk to them and you spend 45 minutes with them, all they do is talk about themselves. After 40, 45 minutes, they look at you and say, oh, sorry, I didn't realize I was talking about myself. <laughs> How selfish. People of greatness understand this. What I found about humility, just quickly, I love that. I want to share it with you. Humility doesn't mean to think of yourself less. It means to think less 
of the self. When you are in presence of great people, you can feel it. And when we talk about public speaking, because we all want to be great speakers, don't we? Confident speakers. There are two types of speakers out there. I found it for myself, and it's my opinion. There is a good speaker and a great speaker. When you go to see a good speaker, and you leave the room, and you get home, all you feel is this. You were so good. She was so good. I'm so good. I can never make what they did. I can never do I, I am not good enough. That's what you feel when you when you're in the presence of a good speaker. But when you leave a person of greatness, you get home, all you feel is, ah, I'm so good. And I, I think I can do this. I think I think I I can manage that. I believe in myself. They have this ability to give you belief in you when you don't believe in yourself. And number three, the last thing on the list is they have a list. And the list is all about greatness. The list is foundation. Greatness. And there are two questions you have to ask yourself. The exercise I've done myself. Number one question you have to ask yourself Who are the people in my life who brought the best out of me? Who are the people in my life who brought the best out of me? And when you, when you think about all these people in your life and you spell their names down and you write the whole list, all I want you to do is take every single name on that list and send them a postcard. Not on the computer, handwritten. And send them a message, something like this. Hello, Marcus. I was just thinking about my beautiful life and I realized that it's because of you that I become a person I could be and I should be. Simple or like that. They never saw it coming, I tell you. <laughs> and the second question, who are the people in your life who you bring the best out of? Imagine 20 years from now your future. Who are the people on your list who are going to tell one day to their grandchildren, Tim was the person who brought the best out of me and it's because of him. My life has changed. Two questions. And I would like to wrap it up with one quick story. I was walking down the beach in the Royal National, in the Royal National Park, Bandina, and we were walking with Anita. And as we were walking, I saw my footsteps in the sand. Half an hour later, we were coming through the same place, to the same spot. They were gone. They were gone. And then I just realized, most people live their lives with leaving the footsteps in the sand, don't they? What I want you to do tonight, I want you to make a decision that you are going to become someone who leaves imprints in people's hearts. Because people forget who, what your name is, and people might forget what you did for them, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And this is what you get when you are around great people. Thank you. Okay.